Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. My name is Jess Larkin, and I am the Marketing and Communications Specialist at Cornerstone. I'm your host for the Build Your Brand webinar series and your go-to gal for all your marketing questions. I want to help you build a brand that is focused on growth. Today we're talking about blogging, which includes how to start one, how it helps you in the Google search rankings, and the features that make a good blog post. But before we get into that, we've got to start with a little bit of housekeeping, as per usual. My contact information is on the screen if you'd like to get in contact with me. Also, be sure to give us a follow on social media. We post industry and cornerstone updates and information. So go to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or YouTube to give us a follow. In case you haven't heard, I'm now offering a full service marketing and consultation program where I will take a closer look at your existing marketing strategies and resources, help you establish realistic and measurable goals and objectives for your brand, and create a step-by-step -step plan to help you optimize your brand and take it to the next level. Some of the services I offer include brand audits, social media management, print marketing, email marketing, onboarding kits, and more. And also, brokers who participate in the program will receive a free brand evaluation workbook. So contact me today for pricing and for more information if you're interested. Now let's get started. So let's talk blogging. The digital space is extremely competitive, as we know, and those without the tools and the resources necessary to stand out tend to fall behind. One of the most common and beneficial digital tools that you can use to drive traffic to your website is a business blog, which is a regularly updated website or web page that contains content on various topics related to your business. A blog post is a specific page within your blog that dives more deeply into that topic. A blog is only a section of your website, but it is updated frequently. For example, on the Cornerstone website, we have the recent news page, which you've probably seen from links on the Monday Minute newsletter. And that's a blog that has industry and carrier information, tools and resources, marketing information, and so on. Blogs have evolved over the years to play a huge role in your online presence in conjunction with your social media and networking strategies. So this isn't the end all be all. This is something that you would want to include in your digital to include in your digital strategies, um, along with social media, along with email marketing, and, and so on. Blogging can help you rank higher on search engines, establish yourself as an expert in the industry, attract visitors to your website, and engage with your audience. Blog posts also provide seamless content for your social media and your newsletter, ensuring that you have consistent content going out to your audience. A phrase that you most often hear when talking about blogging is social, uh, uh, sorry, is search engine optimization, also known as SEO, which is something that I've talked about before and we've had a couple of webinars on in the past. SEO is a strategy that helps you improve your site's ranking on Google and the organic, so the non-paid, section of the search results. For example, if you were to type in doctor near me into your Google search engine, like you can see on the right, more than 7 billion results pop up. But as you scroll down the page, the first result is an ad paid for by a hospital or maybe a doctor's office. Um, those ads can be very expensive and competitive, by the way, especially in health insurance, um, where the larger corporations tend to spend a lot of money on them. Then you have the business listings that show up, so the places that show their addresses and their phone number, directions, things like that. And then we have the content specifically designed to appear higher in the search rankings without spending money. So in this case, Health Grades received the number one spot because it has the best SEO, the best traffic, and high quality content. You can see how that I highlighted it on the screen there. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars to increase your visibility online, but you do have to put in the effort. So you're wanting to aim for either the first page or the second page um, of your Google search, though it's going to be more competitive based on the actual search itself. So it will depend um, what people are searching for, how high you are going to rank on that site. Improving your ranking on Google can help drive more organic traffic to your website. 
HubSpot found that businesses that publish content on a regular basis get 350% more traffic than those that don't put as much effort into their content marketing. That's a lot more traffic and it's definitely worth your time. There are a couple ways you can improve your SEO using a blog, but we'll get to that in a minute. Implementing SEO before knowing how to actually create a blog post is a lot like trying to decorate a cake before you actually bake it. So first we have to talk about step-by-step -step how to actually create a blog post. So if you want to start a blog for yourself, you first need to make sure you have a website. You can then add a blog section to the site and start posting. Um, so if you use a website vendor like Squarespace or like WordPress, this should be an easy addition. It might just be a couple clicks when you go into the back end of your website. Um, but non-techies may need some assistance getting that blog up and running. So you should reach out to your website vendor or I can try to help you out. Um, but you will need to actually add this section to your website. And once you have that blog up and running, it's time to get posting, starting with some valuable long form content. And there are a number, number of details to keep in mind when you're creating your blog post including how long the blog post is, the content that you include, the timing of the post, and so on. For content, consider the questions that you frequently get from your clients about health insurance, or maybe consider health and wellness topics that you think might be useful to tie into health insurance. Um, and what I mean by that, for example, um, let's say it's February, so it's National Heart Awareness Month, so it may be a great time to provide some you know, evidence-based tips on maintaining a healthy heart and healthy heart lifestyle, um, of course, with your resources listed at the bottom. But within that post, you can also plug that some health insurances offer free gym memberships. So if one of your tips for maintaining a healthy heart is, you know, exercise frequently, you can say, oh, did you know that most health insurances or some health insurances offer free gym memberships? That's a great way to include your expertise into something that you had to research. Maybe you always get questions about when your clients can help uh, sign up for health insurance. So in that case, you can write a blog post titled, you know, qualifying life events. Um, but basically, you just want to put yourself in the shoes of the consumer. If you don't know anything about health insurance and you're looking to your health insurance agent, what kind of information would you want to fight, find on their blog? What would you be most likely to read? And how would you want that content to be structured in a way that is approachable and not filled with jargon. You just want to make sure that you remember your audience. With content, it's important to use relevant keywords in your posts as well. The keywords will be tracked by Google to determine the relevance of the piece when it comes to specific searches. So for example, if you want your blog to pop up when someone searches Miwa on Google, you should probably write a blog post about Miwas and be sure to include the word Miwa. Some keywords will be much more competitive than others. Like I said, health insurance is going to be much more competitive than, say, like group benefits. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't use health insurance as a keyword in your blog post. The opposite, actually. You just might not see your blogs climb up much higher in the search rankings for those keywords because they are so competitive and because people are spending a lot of money on them. It's also important to use link trees in your blog posts. Wherever possible, link in your blog post to relevant information on your website. So for example, if you write a blog post about the importance of using a health insurance agent, then it might be worthwhile to link to a page on your website where they can get a quote. Um, creating link trees on your site will engage users and encourage more traffic to other pages of your site. So let's take a look at this blog post from Cornerstone's website that I posted at the end of 2020. Hopefully you saw it. Uh, the piece is called Client Retention Strategies That Actually Work, Advice from Your Friendly Neighborhood Marketing Strategist. This piece is a little bit more than 1,600 words and walks you through the importance of client retention and how to market to your current clientele. So here are a couple things that this post does well. Let's pull it up right here. So first, um, this post is long enough with valuable content for the audience that I'm looking for. So you guys are actually my audience for this piece. As the marketing specialist on the Cornerstone team, it made a lot of sense for me to write a post that could help brokers with their own marketing strategies. 
the content is relevant, and it's also evergreen, um, which means that it can stay on the website for a long time, and it's always going to be valuable. The post also contains lots of link trees, which you can see what I mean by that here. Um, so I have links within the post to different websites wherever my um, wherever I need to include resources. I also have a link to a previous webinar that we've done, just ways to get people to go through and check out the rest of the website as well. So I link to other blog posts. That's what a, a link tree means in this situation. The post is also separated by sections, which increases the likeliness that someone will actually read it until the end. So you can see um, it's separated by mind your P's and Q's, stand out in a world where content is king, um, and so on and so forth. If you have a post that's not sectioned off like this, then it's likely that the reader will get fatigued and will not read the whole post. So you may have started to see online more often than not that many blog posts are organized as listicles instead of as long form content. So for example, you know, the top 10 things to consider when choosing a health insurance agent. Um, you'll often see that kind of content online. And that's because listicles tend to perform better than long form content that is not separated because people tend to get fatigued before they finish. This post also contains an image. Images help with SEO as well, especially if they contain um, alternative text. Alternative text is the text that's used by those with visual impairments. So for example, if I include an image of a couple walking on the beach, I would want to include alt text that says couple watch walking on the beach to provide some context for someone with visual impairments. To include that alt text, you will have an option to do so within the blog um, software that you're using. So on WordPress, for example, when you load up an image into your WordPress for your blog, it gives you an option to include alternative text. And that's just one extra way to um, improve your SEO on your website. And finally, this post uses a ton of keywords like client retention, marketing, and health insurance throughout it so that it can more likely show up in Google search rankings. Now this is very, very important, and I cannot stress this enough. Do not copy and paste content from other sites or sources unless they are cited. Duplicating content will not only put your domain and your site at risk, it will also do nothing to help you increase your visibility online, and it will be just be kind of noise on your blog. Everything you, po you post on your blog should be content created by you. If there is a release from CNS, CMS or a different um, site that you would like to use that it would just be better if you just posted it like this, I would recommend including this was originally posted by CNS with a link to the original piece. So you can see that I did that. On the Cornerstone recent news page, you can see highlighted here, I said the following post was, origi was originally published by healthcare.gov. And then at the end here, you can see to read the HH HHS press release, visit this link. So I did everything that I could to make sure that everyone knew where this post originally came from. Here are a, just a couple of other tips to keep in mind when creating your blog post. These are uh, these don't go in any kind of category. They're just very important things when you're actually putting these posts together. So the first is that I would recommend posting between once and twice per week if possible and sharing those posts on social media and in your newsletter. Consistency is extremely important with blogs. You don't want to post once every couple months because your audience will not see your content as reliable or relevant. You also want to make sure that you're interacting with your blog post. If someone comments on the post or on a social media post about the blog, then you want to be sure to respond to them. A major benefit of a blog is the ability to communicate directly with a target audience while also building a you know, small community of people who are interested in your content. And those people may then share your post, which is an excellent lead generation opportunity. Also, don't be afraid to include guest writers on your blog as well. If you've partnered up with a PNC agent or a financial planner or a lawyer, for example, offer them the chance to also share a blog post on your website. Cornerstone, for example, accepts guest posts from Dennis Haywood for our Social Security Spotlight on a monthly basis. 
This creates more visibility for him and it creates more relevant and varied content for us. So it's a win-win. And lastly, if you aren't a writer, this task is probably going to seem incredibly daunting, though it is easier than you might think. If you're concerned about the time and effort that it takes to maintain a blog, then maybe Cornerstone's marketing consultation services are right for you. Um, with those services, I can take the stress out of, off of your shoulders to actually manage your blog, so write your posts, include them in your socials, and put them in your newsletter for you. So if this is something that you're interested in, but you just don't see um, ever having the time to do it, give me a call today and we can talk more about um, how I can help you. There is just so much more to consider about blogging, but I didn't want to overwhelm you with too much information. So if you're interested in seeing a two-on-one webinar on blogging, please let me know in the comments below. We can talk more about content, categories and tags, metadata, and more. Thank you all for joining today. If you have any questions about this webinar or any other webinar in the Villager brand series, please feel free to reach out to me at jlarkin at crnstone.com. Have a great day.